that was like one of the biggest uh, upsets of the year. And I saw on your Twitter that uh, you picked everybody that lost that night. So uh, <laughs> you know, what's your thoughts on UFC 217 now that everything's uh, said and done with? Man, that was that was a crazy night, man. It just shows you how crazy the sport is, and uh, just one one little mistake could change the whole game up, man. Change the change your night. Everybody I picked lost, man. I had so many people on Twitter calling me, "Dude, I'll never listen to you again. You suck." I'm like, God dang. Uh, I saw all over Twitter that you were practicing Mighty Mouse's uh, flying armbar. I was waiting for you to pop it out versus Tim Means or something. I mean, uh, was that something that you're just working out in the gym, just as uh, you know, fun? No, yeah, I was, I was working on it actually, man. If it ever comes in, if I'm ever in that position, and I'll, I'll throw it up there, man. I'll just try it, just try it. But uh, you saw my spinning kick where, where it missed terribly against Tim Means. But I just want to go out there and just have fun. That's what that's what we do, like at uh, Rubis Bar, man. It's just going out there and just trying new stuff out. You know, going into this fight, I could definitely tell you were trying to push the pace a little more in the first round than normal. Was that something that you know you thought you uh, needed to put into the game plan here? Because uh, you know, uh, Tim kind of starts a little slow. Uh, yeah, that was one of the big things, uh, and a, a big thing with me is, uh, I kind of start a little slow usually with my fights, and I usually pick it up, start toward the end, and, uh, I'm just trying to switch that up where I start right away, because I could go three rounds hard, uh, harder than most guys, so if I can go in there right away, turning it up right away, my opponent's not gonna have anything left by the third round, but, uh, man, he kept a good pace, too, I, I thought he was gonna gas out hard, but he kept going. Yeah, he was picking it up, and a good thing of what you bring up here was, uh, in your Alan Joban fight. In the third round, you really picked things up, and I thought Allen was finished a couple times in that third round. Yeah. And you made some great adjustments. You saw in your TKO finish over uh, Montano, and and moving forward, I mean, you beat some pretty heavy uh, competition here. So now you're calling out the big dogs and Kobe Covington. I see. What made you, uh, you know, call him out on the mic? Man, just just the type of guy he is, and I don't like guys that are that sit there and talk trash, and it doesn't even like do it, do it good. Like he's trying to be trying too hard to be a McGregor. All these guys can't be McGregor. He's more like a McLovin instead of McGregor. I don't know what he what he keeps trying that for. And he's like, trash talk is so garbage, man. It's not even good at all. And then he goes just disrespecting the whole country. And then I know a lot of Brazilian people, man. So that was that just took me off to a whole nother level. And then seeing him in uh, Australia, like at the hotel, uh, when he's walking out of the elevator, like he's he's literally like peeking through the elevator, making sure there's no Brazilians or anybody downstairs. And I swear to God, he's literally peeking through the elevators making sure there's no brazilians down there before he walks out and i'm like i mean if you're gonna if you're gonna be hard you're gonna talk trash and everything like that embrace it go out there be you're a tough guy right so why are you sitting there being all scared of stuff i love how everyone's following suit too i mean uh you know we obviously heard about the whole verdum thing and then i saw a picture of you with a boomerang as well i just love how the whole <laughs> mma community is like on board with this and i saw earlier that uh you posted a picture of colby wearing some bully b shirts outside the courtroom <laughs> 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 yeah dude that's another crazy thing man how are you gonna sit there and be a tough guy then sit there and press charges i mean you didn't get hurt you didn't get uh you know you got what did you get a scratch you're gonna sit there fly all the way back to australia for your court date when you have to go testify against uh verdum i'm like dude that's just soft i don't know what this kid's on he's he's not he's not a a, a fighter or a tough guy as he as he says i don't know what, what he he talks a big game but he's really not and uh it just got me popped up where i was like I, I'm not wrestling. I'm just gonna bang. That was a good fight. I was like, got me wanted to strike. <laughs> I, I saw that in your fight. Your uh, your coaches are screaming at you to, uh, you know, try more takedowns or whatever. Use your wrestling a little more, and you you just wanted to stand there and bang it. Uh, and English so out there, man. I uh, appreciate uh, everybody who supports me, man, and uh, everybody who continues to support me. Thank you so much, Bilal. I appreciate it. Have a great day, and uh, we'll see you in the octagon soon. Best of skill. All right. Thanks, bro.